Um, I'm really honored to be able to kick off this second annual food uh, Midwest Food Matters Gala. This is something that was started last year, was a terrific success, and so I'm really happy to see the success that we've had it, uh, tonight as well. Um, in 1991, there was an author who, uh, in, by the name of William Conan, who published a book entitled Nature's Metropolis. And so maybe some of you may have read that book. And in that book, uh, Cronin described Chicago during the late 19th century as it was transforming from what was considered to be by many a unsophisticated backwater to what it would ultimately become the global epicenter for food and agriculture. And in the book, uh, Cronin juxtapositioned the image of this dirty old city together with the pristine views of the agricultural surroundings. And if you've been around Chicago, you see that there's a lot of that surrounding Chicago. Uh, the image as lush green farmlands that surround. And while many would see this contrast of urban manufacturing center compared to the production agriculture center, they would see this sort of as a contradiction, quite different, especially if you ask someone who's a farmer. But uh, Cronin made the opposite point, and the point was, it is, became what it was because of the immediate proximity of rich agricultural land to the industrial might of Chicago, and that Chicago and the Midwest became global leaders in food and agriculture because of this. But of course, there were a number of other factors that uh, fostered the development of agriculture and food within uh, the region. And the good news is that those very same factors exist today and still lead to food and agricultural leadership in today's world, much as it did in the late 1800s. But I'm going to focus on three just for this evening. The first of these is geography. It is no accident that the Midwest food industry grew up around great cities such as Chicago and Minneapolis and Omaha. The close proximity of industrial capacity to a stable and plentiful supply of raw materials made it so much easier for the food industry to thrive and grow, and it did. In addition, the fact that the Midwest is right in the middle uh, of the continent facilitated shipping and distribution in every direction, north, south, east, west. So it was, a, it was a great place to be. The second factor is that the Midwest is blessed with enormous resources, both natural and otherwise. The Midwestern farmlands are among the most fertile and productive on the planet. But the food system depends heavily on water. Well, here too the Midwest is blessed to have an ample water resource in the region and in fact, the Great Lakes themselves hold 84% of North America's and 21% of the world's surface fresh water. Very important to agriculture and food. And that doesn't even include the many different rivers and tributaries that run throughout the Midwest. Another underappreciated asset to the Midwest food industry are human, is human resources. The Midwest is a vast reservoir of educated, and motivated labor force. To many, the so-called Midwest work ethic, which I hope you've heard about, may be a cliche. But to those of us who grew up in this area and work in the Midwest, it's a tangible value. And it's a value that has benefited the food industry throughout its entire uh, sustainability throughout this, this century. And finally, one resource that has propelled the region to the success is our transportation infrastructure in the Midwest. In the early days, our waterways and wagon routes moved our agricultural products around the country slowly. However, in the 1800s, we built east-west rail routes that transversed the Midwest, making Chicago and many other Midwestern cities crosswords, crosswords for commerce. The Midwest is still a land and water transportation hub to this very day. However, we now have direct access to a global market through air travel which is also uh, quite anchored in the Midwest. And finally, I will consider the most important asset of all to the Midwest, and that is thought leadership. The Midwest is home to some of the best agriculture and food science departments in the world. This is where new food processing technologies are developed and validated. And this is where the current and future employees are educated and these are the institutions that are where U.S. and Midwest food and agriculture leaders are born. 
But thought leadership doesn't stop at the gateway to college campuses, as you, as you know. And this particular event uh, is a tribute to the leadership, innovation, and discipline that is the Midwest food industry. The Midwest is home to both multinational giants with their access to global markets, as well as to many more, for instance, in the Chicago area alone, there are 4,500 small and middle-sized food companies who likewise lead, innovate, and even supply the large companies with some of the ingredients that they need. Together, the Midwest food industry, both small and large, account for about 25% of the total U.S. production, and so we do make a difference both domestically and globally. So, but what does all this have to really do with global marketplace? Well, the answer is everything. Where else in, can you find in any one region or place a combination of the perfect location, abundant natural and human resources, and the intellectual talent and drive to take the risks and innovate that re is required in the food industry? Yes, there are many other places around the world that have a few of these things. They may have two of these things, but there is nowhere like the American Midwest that has the combination of all of these. It is why, since the 1800s, that the Midwestern food industry has defined and led the global marketplace in foods. And it is poised to continue that legacy if it so chooses. So as we go about celebrating our honoree tonight, uh, I hope that you will also view this event in the spirit in which it was conceived, and that is it's an acknowledgment of both the individual and combined contributions of an industry that has set the standard globally. And that industry is, of course, the Midwest food supply and industry. So with that, I thank you for these brief comments. And I also have the pleasure to move into continuing on with this uh, theme of what makes uh, the industry so important in the Midwest. And that is to be able to uh, provide and, and uh, present the 2016 Distinguished Service Provider Award. While we are in the, here tonight to recognize the strengths and impacts of the Midwest food industry, we all know that this industry, really all the industries in this area, are a composite of many different elements, as I've mentioned before, including a broad cross-section of service providers that are essential, that are critical to the success of our businesses, whether it's bankers, law firms, accountants, insurance companies, marketing agencies, consultants, you could go on, the list goes on and on. Uh, each one plays a role in making our industry robust and successful. Tonight we would like to recognize one organization that has been a consistent and exceptional partner in the support of the Midwest food industry. We requested input from many of our industry leaders, some of which are in, in this room, and stakeholders to find a candidate that has established track record of food industry support. And we had many different uh, and excellent candidates, but we had to select one that seemed to resonate through a number of our industry peers and resources for their professionalism, their productivity, and again, that word innovation. And so I am pleased to present the 2016 Distinguished Service Provider Award to Wells Fargo Bank. Wells Fargo Bank. And it, thank you. Good. Accepting the award for Wells Fargo Bank is Bob Stegman. If we could have him come forward. 